Hello and welcome to St James's Church uh, for our Bible readings and our sermon today. Um, if you are watching this on the video while listening to the podcast, then I apologise for the loudest of my shirt. Uh, we've just come back from doing a wedding for a friend, which has been fantastic. Um, it does mean that my shirt is slightly louder than would normally be the case. Uh, let's begin by reading our two readings from today. Um, our first reading is from uh, Peter's first letter, chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. And Peter wrote this. Now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. And Jesus, speaking to his disciples, says this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. And trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we uh, reflect on these passages, let's pray and ask God for his wisdom. Lord God, thank you that you are always with us. And we pray now that you would fill us again with your Holy Spirit, and that you would help us to hear your voice speaking to our hearts. Amen. So, uh, we're still looking at the letter of 1 Peter, and it's important to think about context, about who he's writing to, why he's writing to them. Um, so you look at the first line here, it says, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? Uh, so who is the you? Well, the you is the Christians, the believers in Jesus who have fled persecution and who are now living throughout the Roman Empire uh, in small groups. Uh, they are isolated, they are minorities, um, and they are being persecuted. Uh, they're being persecuted by the Romans because... Uh, to succeed in the Roman Empire, uh, you have to acknowledge Caesar is Lord. Caesar is God and King. Uh, that is their creed. And as Peter says, the church is creed. Those following the way of Jesus. Their creed is simply Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is God, not Caesar. So they are uh, absolutely... Uh, repudiated and offensive to uh, the Roman uh, Empire, the Roman contingent. And they're also repugnant to the Jews because they're a breakaway sect. They are advocating this man, Jesus, as God, as Lord. Well, that's, that's not OK. That's not, uh, that's not reasonable. And so uh, as people come to faith in Jesus, people receive Jesus as Lord, it destabilises these different social groups, these power groups uh, in uh, the Roman Empire. And so therefore, they are targets. People don't like them. People don't want them around. In the same way that Jesus himself disturbed the power equation of, uh, of Palestine, of Jerusalem, uh, when he was teaching and preaching in, in the years up to his crucifixion and resurrection. So, Peter is writing to Christians who are in fear of their lives, Christians who are being persecuted, who are suffering because of what they believe. Now, we've been looking at the imagery of uh, being aliens, being pilgrims, uh, the imagery of um, their God being Father, their, God, their Father being God, uh, and the imagery of them being, of being travellers having a home somewhere else, 
of not belonging where they are. And so therefore what happens where they are not being as important as their eternal destination, which is secure in God, it's secure through their faith in Jesus. So Peter is writing to people who are genuinely afraid for their lives. Uh, and his advice is, is really direct. Who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? It's like, I know that it's hard. I know people are out to get you. But if you are a good influence, if you are being kind to people, if you are uh, continuing the work that happened in Jerusalem of feeding uh, widows and orphans, who's going to have a problem with that? Why would this be an issue? And, and yet Peter acknowledges that obviously for some people it will be an issue because they cannot say Caesar is Lord. Uh, they cannot deny that they think that Jesus is God, which is uh, against, it sounds like it's polytheism uh, if you're a first century Jew. Uh, so Peter then writes this, but even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. So I'm not sure how comforting that is, but there's a sense of um, it's not so much about now. It's about eternity. So, yes, people may persecute you. They may uh, attack you, even if you are doing good things, even if you are being kind. And if that's the case, then I'm sorry, but God will reward you. You won't miss out because there will be blessings in eternity that will more than make up for what you are suffering now. Now, we know that uh, Peter goes on to be martyred. Um, tradition has him being crucified, but upside down by at his request because he didn't deserve to die the same way as Jesus. So Peter is not in an ivory tower saying to people, oh, you, you, it'll be fine, just, you just, just suck it up. Actually, Peter is speaking about what he is living, which is we preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. And if we get put in prison for it, which happens in the book of Acts, chapter 4, um, if, if we die for it, as happens to James and Stephen early in the book of Acts, as Peter has seen happen to other apostles and will ultimately happen to him, well, it doesn't matter because this is not all that our life is. Our life is more than this. Our life goes on further than this. And actually, in the context of eternity, our life here is brief. This is a fraction of the time that we will spend with the life that God has given us. So therefore, yeah, if it's unfair, if they're punishing you and you don't deserve it, OK, God will make it right. God will even things up. It's OK. And then he goes on to say what they should focus on. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. There you go. So that's Peter's answer. We just worship Jesus. We focus on him. He is Lord of our lives. Everything is about him. And so if people say, oh, you know, why, why are you acting this way? Why are you meeting with these people? Why are you uh, feeding orphans who have nothing to do with your family group? because Jesus is Lord, because we follow him and he has freed us and given us eternal life. And so therefore we do what he would do. We show love, we show care. And having said that, it's in their hands what they do. And people might react by wanting to find out more People might react aggressively saying this is dangerous. This is not what we believe. It's not what the majority believe. And we are going to punish you and get rid of you. 
And I think for Peter, if, if that's the case, then that's the case. And actually we see in the book of Revelation, someone writing to early Christians saying, I had a vision of heaven and here is the place for the martyrs. Here is the special place of honour for those who have suffered to the extent of losing their own lives. They are, they are at God's, uh, they're at God's privileged place. They are centre stage because of what they have sacrificed. So the early church writers are aware that this is a reality. They are aware that this is true. Now, always when we are reading the Bible together, we look at it and we say, so what does this mean for us? What do we do with this? And I think one of the difficulties when we're reading this in Western Britain, Western Western Europe, in Britain, uh, is this about persecution. And so therefore we look for persecution. We look for ways in which we are um, despised, looked down on, disregarded, disadvantaged because of our faith in Jesus. And sometimes I think that that can make Christians um, actually go the other way to where Peter intends. I think sometimes we can become militant about uh, our right to have our faith, uh, about you know how we demonstrate our faith, about how we, what we wear. Um, you know, there's the the stories about someone who was is not allowed to have a, the cross uh, in his car when he drives on his work, or isn't allowed to wear a cross as they carry out their duties. Uh, and that some of these things have gone to court. And maybe it's right these things get tested. And I respect these people's right to say, well, why can't I express my faith in this way? I wonder if it's the most important thing. I wonder if it's the fight that we should be fighting. Certainly, Peter's focus is, you should, let's have a look at uh, verse 13 again. Who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? His focus is do good, do what is right. And the Bible is so clear that that is to care for those who go without, to speak up for the oppressed, uh, to stand up for those who are struggling, to show compassion and care in a way that is costly to us in a way that puts us out. It is, um, yeah, it is about being different in as much as being Christian means to care in a way which which hurts us. Uh, Jesus loved us and gave his life. He was, he was beaten and he was killed in order that we might be free, that we might have life. And so we are called to do good to others, not just when it's convenient, not just when we have a spare moment or we need something that looks good on a CV, but we are called to sacrificially look for ways to do good to others, to do what is right in difficult situations. Um, It's been so encouraging that There is such a will amongst us as a church to respond to the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, People wanted to collect uh, things, give things away and and meet the needs of those people. But actually there is a a wider need to advocate for those people, uh, to get involved with the council and say, what is it you're doing? How are we helping these people? What, what what is going on and, and holding our government to account as to what they are doing to support people who were effectively working for our nation just a short while ago and that has obviously has ended since we have pulled out of Afghanistan. There is a role to be done in in meeting people who are newly arrived in London, finding out how we can get to know them, how we can befriend people 
who are in an alien place. But that's a far harder thing to do. That's a far more costly thing to do. But I think that's what marks Christian love, is that it is doing things which are personally costly and sacrificial. Now, Jesus' words in the Gospel of John, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. There's more than enough in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you? I'm going to prepare a place for you. So you have Jesus speaking to Peter, saying, don't worry, I've got you. Whatever is happening to you now, whatever happens now, I've got you. I will come back and take you to the place where I'm going to be. It will be okay. And I, I have to be honest, I think sometimes I am guilty of worrying too much about myself. About um, what money I have. About what my future holds. About what I'll do next year. Um, all sorts of things that actually I can't control by worrying about them. But, but I still do. Whereas actually, the example we have and what we're urged to do by Peter, get on with being kind. Get on with doing the right thing. Get on with loving people around you. And if you suffer for it, I'm sorry. But God will not let, leave you. God will not let himself be in debt to you. God will reward you. God will give you what you deserve. God will bless you in answer for anything that, that you can do for him. Uh, there is a, a passage in Proverbs which says, um, a gift to the poor is a loan to God and God repays those loans in full. What we give, actually God... God, make, God, God blesses us more than we could ever give out. And sometimes I think the more we give, the more space there is for God to, to bless us, for God to give to us, because we'll, we'll need it. The more we're giving away, the, the more there's a question mark about whether we'll have all that we need. And we need God to provide for us. We need God to care for us. Whereas sometimes I don't need God to provide for me. I have a house that comes with my job. I have an income. I, I know what's coming in at the end of the month. That, that I'm okay. It's only if I'm giving to other people, I'm creating that uncertainty where I'm saying, God, I'm trusting that you'll provide what I need in this situation. Because if you don't, then I'm a bit stuck. God responds to that faith. God loves it when we demonstrate that faith by giving all that we have. The widow's might. It was her last two coins. Weren't worth very much, but it was all she had. And that was what was remembered and that's what was recorded because what she gave was of such value to God. So, a reminder as uh, most weeks in Peter's letter, this is not our home. We're not building castles for ourselves here. We are travellers for a time. And our ultimate home is with our Father in heaven. And so our purpose here is to do good, to eagerly desire to do good, to do the right thing. And sometimes that means that people will look down on us, people will uh, try to punish us, will try to uh, freezes out of things and if that's the case who is bigger those people persecuting us or our father in heaven who has the greater resources who are we putting our trust in
Peter always looks at the world and the stick that the world wields. And he looks at God and the power of God and the promise of Jesus to come back and bring us to the home he has built for us. And for Peter, there is no concern. We keep doing good because we can trust in Jesus. We don't need to let our hearts be troubled. I'm going to pray for us and just ask God to inspire us with that faith and trust in him. That we can do good in a way which is costly and sacrificial. And means that we receive from God that which we have given out. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your provision for us. And thank you that you are with us right now today. And we do give you the situations we're in, those uh, circumstances where it feels like we are treated differently because of our faith, because we, we look down on because of our faith. Lord, would you help us to passionately go on doing good, being kind, in a way which, which costs us, and a way that leaves us needing you uh, to give us our daily bread, that needs you to step in and to fill up where we have poured out. Lord, we thank you that our our faith is in a sure thing. Our faith is in the certainty that you've prepared a place for us and our eternity is with you. Holy Spirit, would you come close to us now? Would you remind us how great, how awesome you are? that our trust is rightly placed in you and not in the, the idle threats of the people of this world. Thank you, Lord. We receive your Holy Spirit again. And we ask that you would guide us to those good deeds you want us to do in the days to come. Lord, direct our feet, direct our hands, direct our voices. That we might do all that you have for us to do. We ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Uh, thank you for listening, for watching. Uh, I hope to catch up with you soon. Have a lovely week and God bless. Bye bye.